Well, there were several strands that came together in producing the book, Every Promise of Your Word. I became fascinated with Joshua studying it as a seminary student, looking at the theological themes in the book and later delving into the Hebrew text, um, looking at the Septuagint's translation of Joshua. And then when I went into pastoral ministry, I began to teach through the themes of the book, but decided that I wanted to begin at the very beginning and preach all the way through the book. So it really had its origins uh, in a series of expositional sermons, but I've tried to provide more than that in every promise of your word. I've tried to provide uh, expository commentary, but also some underlying help in the footnotes for the, the Hebrew text and uh, some other resources. Uh, this book is aimed at uh, several different readers. Um, first of all, I hope any Christian would be able to pick this up, learn more about Joshua, and be helped in their own walk with the Lord. Uh, I hope it also provide a guide for ministers who want to study and preach through the book, that they would find here at least a way, if not the best way, to work through uh, a text, uh, a historical uh, narrative in the Old Testament, and look at a way to outline that, a way to present it, and a way to see uh, not only the text of the book of Joshua, but how it leads us to Christ and how it applies to our own Christian lives. The subtitle of the book is The Gospel According to Joshua, and that may seem like an unusual subtitle for a book on the Old Testament, but that's written with a couple of convictions in mind. Number one, that uh, though Joshua is a part of the Hebrew Bible, it's a part of the overall Christian Bible. So this is a book for Christians, and it ought to be read from that perspective. It's a part of the revelation of God that ultimately culminates in Christ. So as a New Testament believer, I want to come and approach this book and see how it leads me to Christ, to the ultimate revelation in Him. And there are several ways that that happens. Probably the most obvious way is typology. Certainly Joshua is a type of Christ. Hebrews 4 tells us that, that if, if Joshua in the Old Testament had been able to give Israel its perfect rest in the land, uh, there wouldn't be a need for this other Joshua to lead us into our rest. So there's a lot of typology uh, in the book, and that helps get, to, get us to Christ. Um, theological themes that run through the book uh, also are very gospel-centered, gospel-oriented. And if someone wants to read this book or prepare to preach for it, they need to be looking at those theological themes, remembering that you're at an earlier stage in redemptive history, an earlier stage in progressive revelation. But if you're thinking in terms of those big themes, then you can figure out how does this then lead me ultimately to what's revealed to me in Christ. Um, uh, for example, uh, in Achan's sin, he falls, uh, he is guilty before God. And that passage teaches us a lot about ourselves and our own covetousness and the corporate impact of our sins. But it also teaches us that God doesn't take sin lightly. Sin has to be punished. And when we talk about the punishment of sin, uh, we want to, as Spurgeon would say, make a beeline for the cross where our sins were laid on him. Uh, other passages like that, um, the um, long day of Joshua and the victory over the Canaanite coalition, what does God do? He miraculously intervenes to deliver his people. Well, isn't that what the cross is all about? God's miraculous intervention for deliverance. So major theological themes help get us to the gospel, our own need uh, in the book. For example, when we do see our own sin in covetousness, like with Achan, uh, it shows us our need for a savior. Uh, then I would think another way that the gospel comes out clearly here is by way of contrast. You see sometimes Israel's failure. For example, in uh, chapter 9 with their league with the Gibeonites, uh, the leaders of Israel failed to inquire of the Lord, the text said. And so they led the people astray. But if I study that passage, I would want to point out the contrast to that. I have a leader who never fails to pray and who never fails to uphold me before the Father. 
So contrast is another good way to show gospel truth in the passage. But it's a, it's a Christian book. And uh, so we ought to look for those Christian themes that are there, nascent in their form, their uh, adumbrations, their types, their shadows. It's not all fully there yet in Jesus, but it leads us to the ultimate endpoint, uh, the goal of redemptive history.